Hello YouTube, this is Bowtide Media, and today I have a review of Zavi's freshman album, To the Endless, Searing Skies. Now, Zavi is a name that I'm sure most of you have not heard of before, unless you're a really big EDM head. He's not super popular, but someone who is definitely near and dear to my heart. The very first time I heard a Zavi track, it was randomly in the summer of 2017, and it was his remix of Valentine's Her. And it happened to be that that very day is the day that I met a very special woman in my life who would later become my wife. And so that song holds a lot of meaning to me. That song would also later become sort of an anthem for our relationship and something that we heavily debated playing at our wedding, which we ended up not actually doing. But enough with his old stuff. Today we're talking about new Zavi, his debut album to the endless Searing Skies. If I had to define Zavi's style and musical sound design, I would say it is melodic future bass. It's not quite as upbeat and fruity as Future Bass normally is, and it's something that I'd say is a lot more gritty and kind of darker than melodic dubstep is for the most part. It's a fairly unique sound design that I've come to really enjoy and love. Zavi also proclaims that he likes to make emotional music. He likes to do emotional EDM music, and that is definitely true with a lot of songs across this LP. Whether or not that actually lands is a bit of a different story, so let's get into it. First off, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a red flag for me, but when an artist says they like to make emotional music, especially emotional EDM music, it's uh, I kind of a little hesitant at first. Normally I'd say that Elenium is kind of the best artist that was defined by someone that says they like to make emotional EDM music, and I think he uses obviously his melodic dubstep and future bass to kind of convey a sense of feeling or broad emotion, and uses some pretty baseline, kind of easily recognizable narratives in his lyrics. Because Elenium sees a lot of commercial success, he wants to create music in a feeling that appeals to a broader spectrum of people. On the flip side of that, Zavi doesn't really have the huge commercial success that Elenium does, not even by a fraction. And that is okay. To have an artist like Zavi have this smaller following, this niche, they can hone in more on direct kind of emotional feelings or relationships that you wouldn't normally be able to explore or listen to at in a commercially successful project. Because when you get really big, you feel like you need to, or the label tells you that you need to appeal to a wider audience, appeal to more people. Zavi doesn't have that issue, and I really like that. And the perfect example of that kind of song and ideology is Sadak. Sadak in the Search of the Waters is essentially the musical representation of the famous British romantic oil painting by John Martin. Both mediums convey a story of a man, Sadak, that is either climbing or clinging onto the edge of a mountain with massive natural land formations right in front of him. The narrative in both mediums is essentially a human struggle and what it looks like to struggle and try to obtain something as a human and also how powerless we are to the vast just expansiveness of nature. The song explores that idea and ideology narratively a little bit. There's not a ton of vocals here or lyrics in general, but also specifically sonically and how it sounds, the kind of feeling of a journey of climbing a mountain and getting there and standing and seeing this giant mountain hills in front of you with waterfalls and lakes and everything. It's, it's quite an experience. And there are a ton more of layered imagery and metaphors that if you really dig deep into this LP, you will find so much more kind of gratitude and satisfaction from listening and understanding each track. Another piece of brilliant storytelling comes from the two tracks Random Acts of Collision and Ave Maria. Random Acts of Collision explores the idea of looking up to someone as a hero, but when you are in a time of need and need rescue, they no are not there for you. Only for Zavi to circle back to that notion in Ave Maria at the beginning of the song to say, all my heroes are dead. And that in the end, it's really the music that keeps you going. And the imagery goes even further where Ave Maria is actually the name of a very famous funeral song that is often played at people's funerals, where Zavi takes that motif and has the funeral, the death of his heroes or someone's heroes, and the kind of new life or rebirth of something else, which in this case is the love and passion for music. There's a lot of little things like that and almost like Easter eggs that are littered throughout this project and stuff that, again, if you really just hone in, do some research about the titles, figure out what you kind of want to listen to and songs you want to dive deep into, you can find so much. And songs like Neverless is very similar, one of the singles that came out beforehand, which kind of just talks about 
workaholics and how your god is essentially the idea that you need to keep working. There are topics and narrative stories that I don't think could be told in a commercially successful format, something that Zavi can explore a lot more freely in a project like this. But I mentioned at the beginning there is a flip side. Sometimes Zavi doesn't really hit the mark where the vocals are too distorted and the mix is a little too off that you actually have no idea what they're even saying or trying to convey narratively. Like the ending of Ave Maria, the pre-chorus drop to random acts of collisions, and almost the entirety of the warmth of known. They're sections of individual songs that I have no idea what they're trying to say, and I'm trying very hard to listen to understand. Things that could have benefited a lot more from a little more clarity, or maybe not as a distorted of vocal. Or just bring the vocals up in the mix. There's a ton of bass, and Zavi really loves his production more than anything, and that's what he emphasizes the most, which is not a bad thing. But when you're trying to convey some deeper narrative that's going on, I kind of need to hear what's happening lyrically. Which brings me to the other main point, the other half of this video I want to talk about in terms of this album, his production. Throughout most of the notes in the writing for the script, I often jotted down big ups, low downs. It's something that is very familiar and almost a cliche to the emotional electronic music. It's the idea that you have a really, really low kind of beginning or verses that have a sense of anticipation and or waiting that take a long build into the drop, which is essentially a hammer of a thousand tons falling on your face. It's a style of music I am super comfortable with and probably would say is one of my favorite, like kind of uh, sonic elements of a track. It's kind of hard to explain and it's weird to categorize, but something that I really enjoy. It's pretty much a song taking me on a journey. It's something that I love hearing. Our Languish is probably the perfect example of this idea, this musical motif that Zavi loves to come back to. Or Sadak even. It has almost a four minute build or pre-chorus or verse that comes into a mighty fine climax of a drop. But in the same way that the narrative depth had its kind of pros and cons, the production style of the big ups and low downs has its drawbacks too. When a song likes to ebb and flow as much as Zavi likes to make it go, sometimes it's a little jarring and just the tonality of the track from one section to another. If it's not executed well, I think it sounds very jarring to go from one area of a song to another just so suddenly without any build or just kind of removing some elements of the song I had liked before. There are some absolutely astounding sections of the song that sound so good in a vacuum. The pre-chorus kind of choir chants that are happening and the build, like the kind of drum and bass getting kind of fade in, is so beautifully put together. But when it all comes to the culmination of the drop, it kind of just drops the ball. All those things that I loved about the previous section are gone. And to me, it felt like an inverse song where the big sections of it were the verse and pre-chorus and then the drop was kind of just low, laid back and kind of chilled. It's a song that I think could have benefited a lot from keeping the momentum going really high and not wanting to just do this all the time for the sake of having <laughs> just the ebbs and flows. And then the second drop just comes by and slaps you in the face, kind of has no build to it and no really real conclusion. Now, don't get me wrong here. This is one of my favorite cuts of the album. I would probably say it's actually number one, but I just felt like if there's a little more cohesion between elements and sections of the song in between one another, a little more transition that was a little smoother, this would easily be a song of the year contender for me. Instead, it's really just relegated to a good track. Going back to that kind of distorted vocal that I talked about before, Zavi loves using it and it's something that I think works really well, but as the album kind of goes on, I felt like I needed less of it. I needed some more conclusion. I needed some payoff. I just needed something that it, I could just grab onto and have some conclusion to. Zavi loves his distorted vocals and it's littered all throughout the album, but maybe just tone it back a little bit and actually sometimes I'd like to hear what you're trying to say and what you're trying to convey lyrically. For a freshman project, I think Zavi does a lot of things right and just a few things wrong. I thoroughly enjoyed the storytelling and what Zavi was trying to go for, albeit sometimes there was a lack of clarity in terms of the uh, vocal kind of distortion like I talked about, or just the final mastering. I really did enjoy all of the tracks on this project. I felt with maybe a little bit more time and a little bit more experience, which Zavi doesn't have as of right now, this could easily be a 10 out of 10 project for me. Again, the direction and purpose Zavi went for was super ambitious and I loved it. And I would way prefer a new artist or a relatively new artist when this is your first big project 
to make something ambitious and only hit 60, 70% of what you were trying to attain than to kind of create something that's just lackluster and you know it's not gonna be what you really want it to be at the beginning. Zavi tried to go hard out of the get-go and did a fairly good job. And for all of that, Zavi's to the Endless Searing Sky is going to score a seven. But thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you've actually heard of Zabi before this moment. Before this video, did you know who Zabi was? Have you listened to a lot of his music before? Let me know what you guys think of this project. Also hit me up on all the socials. I am there everywhere if you hit Bowtide Media in the search engine. And uh, you know what? I will see you guys in another video.